Well, the day has finally come. The Zoot Pro Stand is officially available for retail purchase. I am one of the first artists to get my hands on one, and today I'm going to share my first impressions. I have covered this device in other videos, but some things have changed since I used the prototype. I have the stand attached to my Cintiq 27 QHD, but it is also compatible with a wide range of current and past display tablets from Wacom and other brands. Check out the Zoot Pro website for the most up-to-date list. This is not a sponsored video, but I did receive the Zoot Pro for free unconditionally to do as I please with it. All opinions in this video are my own. For those of you who have not yet heard of the Zoot Pro, it's a new alternative to the various stands made for large display tablets like the Wacom Ergo stands and monitor arms like those made by Ergotron. Because the main benefit of using a display tablet is that you can draw on it or touch the screen, it's important to have a stand that will allow you to work comfortably. Many of these tablets now no longer come with legs or a stand, so you pretty much have to buy something to mount it. So which type of stand should you choose? I have years of experience with many of these stands, and there are pros and cons to each of them, which I will share to help illustrate the benefits of the Zoot Pro over other mounting options. In order to truly appreciate the Zoot Pro, you really must have tried one of the other stands, but I'll do my best to describe why it's so exceptional. The Zoot Pro is a unique type of stand because unlike ergo stands and monitor arms, it features a sophisticated electromagnetic braking system. In layman's terms, it's easy to move and it can also stay locked in place. If you've ever fought with a monitor arm or felt dissatisfied with the stiffness of Wacom stands, then the Zoot Pro might be for you. As you can see, I simply touch the strips on the back sides of my tablet and this allows me to freely angle the display. I can bring it down to a comfortable drawing or touchscreen angle, or place it farther away in a vertical position that is better suited for most everything else. Once I take my fingers off of the touch strips, the brakes engage, holding the tablet firmly in place. I can also move the display forward and backward on my desk. A clamp, arm, and feet keep the device from tipping over and allow it to glide across my desk. I can also rotate my display and even manually adjust the tension to make it harder or easier to rotate. If you've watched my recent review of the Wacom Cintiq Pro 27, you may remember that the main issue I had with the Ergo Stand is that it feels very rigid and difficult to adjust. This is a good thing in terms of stability, but not ergonomics. It also tightly grips the desk at the base, which again is good for stability, but makes it nearly impossible to slide it around to reposition it. Same goes for rotation. There's no way to choose how easy it is to rotate your display. That's not to say this is a bad stand, because it is well designed. It's the best version of the Ergo stand I've tried. It's just not very flexible. If you plan to keep your display more or less in the same position most of the time, and you just want to change the angle, then this is an excellent stand. But if you want to move your display more easily and with more freedom of motion, then you'll want one of the next options. I've already demonstrated how the Zoot Pro solves many of the ergonomic challenges you'll encounter while using an ergo stand, so let's take a quick look at monitor arms, which are another popular way to mount a display tablet. Here you can see I have my Cintiq attached to an Ergotron LX monitor arm. This is how I have kept this display mounted since I got it in 2016. Prior to this, I had a Cintiq 24 HD mounted to an ergo stand. This was very difficult to reposition, very bulky and heavy, and it did not allow the display to rotate. The monitor arm felt a lot better to use. It took up a fraction of the space, and I could freely move and rotate the display into all sorts of exotic positions. The problem is that the arm is a little unruly. You have to first manually set the rigidity of the arm. This requires a lot of turning with a long hex wrench. You have to find the balance between holding the tablet steady and allowing it to move. As an artist, you'll probably want to lean more toward rigidity so the tablet doesn't wobble or move out of position when drawing on it. Unfortunately, adding tension makes it difficult to get the display back into a specific position. It requires a lot of physical activity to wrestle the arm into position when the arm is semi-rigid. Therefore, a lot of the flexibility gained by using a monitor arm is lost after making it suitable for drawing. For this reason, I rarely moved my display while it was attached to the monitor arm. It was just easier to keep it in a position that works well for drawing and not move it. When I did move it, one reason was because I needed to use my desktop for something. 
Having the display on the monitor arm made it very easy to move it out of the way. But I still had to fight the arm to bend the right way and take caution not to knock around the other stuff on my desk. Most of the time, I'd just angle the display a bit. This is fairly easy to do, but still requires some physical effort. And there's a good chance you'll move a different part of the arm and have to adjust that as well. Relative to the other stand options, the monitor arm has the greatest range of movement. As long as your desk is heavy enough not to tip over, you can even move your display past the edge of your desk. You can see I have two extra displays. One is a smaller display tablet, and both are hovering away from the desk surface. This is a very desk standing desk, so it's very heavy. Although smaller than an Ergo Stand or Zoot Pro, these are still heavy metal arms that weigh quite a bit. You'll need a heavy, stable desk for all of these mounting options. The Wacom Ergo Stand recommends that you do not position the display too far over the edge of your desk, or it might topple over. The Zoot Pro is meant to hover beyond the edge of your desk, but not to the degree that the monitor arm can. As you can see, the monitor arm is by far the most flexible of the mounting options. You can't get this level of movement from the Ergo Stand or Zoot Pro. However, those stands offer more rigidity in terms of keeping the tablet in a more consistent position. I'd say the Ergo Stand is the least flexible option. The Zoot Pro offers a good balance of rigidity and flexibility. In terms of weight, the Zoot Pro is the heaviest at 40 pounds. And while the most recent Ergo Stand is only half of that, it's still quite heavy once you add the weight of the display because they're attached to each other. This ends up being about 36 pounds you need to lift to reposition the Ergo Stand on your desk. And the design makes it very awkward to pick up. Aside from the initial installation, you don't need to lift the Zoot Pro. It simply slides to where you want it. In terms of physical effort, it takes the least energy to move the Zoot Pro. Bulk matters if you aren't using a large desk or you have a lot of other stuff on it. The monitor arm takes up the least space, and the Zoot Pro takes up the most. It also has the most components. The Ergo Stand is closer to the Zoot Pro in terms of bulkiness. The initial assembly isn't too complicated for any of these mounting options. That's coming from someone who hates putting things together. The monitor arm takes the least amount of time to assemble. It's really just adjusting the clamp, adding the thumb screws, then adjusting the tension. The Zoot Pro setup takes quite a bit of time and involves a lot of steps, but there are video tutorials you can follow that walk you through it. Some of the assembly only needs to be done once, and then disassembly becomes shorter. For example, you may only need to adjust the clamp height and stick on the touch strips once. While I can't say the same for the previous Ergo stands, the current one for the Pro 27 was very easy to assemble with a mounting plate you attach to the back of the display that slides into a slot in the stand. It was the quickest and least complicated setup out of all the stands. The monitor arm is the most portable mounting option, mainly due to its size. However, all of these mounting options can remain fixed to the display while you move at short distances, like around your desk or maybe even to another desk in the same room. Although to be safe, you'd probably want to remove these stands from the display for anything more than that. For the monitor arm, you would need to spend time loosening the tension, then unscrew the VESA screws and the desk clamp. It's not a lot of steps, but the tension adjustment takes a lot of time. The Cintiq Pro 27 Ergo Stand allows the display to quickly and easily separate from the stand, so that requires the least amount of disassembly effort as well. The Zoot Pro is somewhere in the middle. You'd need to loosen the clamp from the desk, and then disconnect the touch strip cables and remove four thumb screws. Regardless of which mounting option you are using, it's recommended that you support your display using some soft foam to keep the display from falling. So keep your box and your packaging. Another difference between these stands is that the Zoot Pro requires power, whereas the other two stands do not. This is because the Zoot Pro uses electromagnetic braking to lock the tablet in position. The tablet glides easily when unlocked because its weight is perfectly balanced against the weight of your display. In comparison, the monitor arms use tension combined with internal gas or springs to control the rigidity. While the Ergo Stand just feels like it has some internal friction that is keeping the device from moving around too much. There aren't any paddles you have to hold down like in older generations. As you know, these display tablets have quite a few cables that need to be tidied up. 
It's just a free-for-all on the back of the ergo stand, but you can purchase some inexpensive cable management products to fix that. The monitor arm and Zoot Pro offer a way to route the cables through the arm. I was too lazy to do it with my monitor arm, but I did bind the cables together at one point. It's super easy to route the cables through the Zoot Pro. In fact, the stand comes with all the cables you'll need to connect your display already routed through the base of the stand. Mine has DisplayPort, HDMI, USB-A, and power. You just need to plug them into your display and computer and then snap a cover over them once you tuck them into the arm. Another consideration is how the stand affects your keyboard and mouse, which could be on your desk in front of your display. I keep mine on a keyboard tray, so this isn't a concern to me, but it may be for you. If you are finding that you cannot move your display forward because it mows down your peripherals, then the Zoot Pro might be a good solution. The display is elevated to allow for clearance on your keyboard and mouse, though the display can be made to angle down to touch your desk at its lowest point. You can even add optional folding legs that keep the display elevated even at the lowest angle. The steadiness of the display when drawing on it is another important factor. The ergo stand felt a bit too wobbly for me when the tablet wasn't resting on the edge of the desk. Same goes for the monitor arm, especially when elevated far off of the desk. The Zoot Pro employs electromagnetic brakes, so other than the wobble from my desk, the display is very rigid. It does wobble a bit, but far less than the other options. In terms of appearance, each stand has their own aesthetic. The monitor arms are quite elegant with various chrome or painted finishes. The ergo stand looks great. It's sleek with a design that somewhat resembles a monitor stand. The Zoot Pro is mostly good looking, I'd say like 95%. It's primarily metal with some plastic. The one thing that takes away from the design aesthetic is the touch strips. The copper touch strips look sort of out of place and give the device a slight homemade appearance. That's really superficial and not at all something that takes away from the functionality of the stand. It's just me being nitpicky. Besides, the touch strips are on the back and you'll never see them anyway. Still, I think that if there were some way to make those look more custom made or less contrasting, that might improve the aesthetic. To be fair, the chrome Ergotron arm doesn't exactly match my display either. In terms of blending in with the device, a similarly colored monitor arm or the ergo stand have the advantage. But again, the other 95% of the Zoot Pro looks gorgeous. It looks like it's meant to be used with my Cintiq. The build quality of all of these stands is excellent. I can't speak for every off-brand of monitor arm out there because there are some poor quality ones, but Ergotron arms are great. The Wacom Ergo stands are also very well built. I know from having observed how much effort went into creating this stand that the Zoot Pro is also well designed. From the concept and patents to testing, manufacturing, and marketing, it's remarkable that a single person is responsible for bringing this stand to us. It's worth checking out the technical details of the Zoot Pro to get a feel for the amount of thought that went into it. I do think it's fair to point out that the Zoot Pro is definitely the more complicated of the stand options. There are more components that could require repair compared to the monitor arm and ergo stand, which are not as elaborate mechanically. The good news is that the Zoot Pro was engineered to be easily repairable and even customizable. One example is the spacer that can be changed out to customize the height of the display. Another is the position of the touch strips, which can be placed almost anywhere, including the top edge. You can even place a third strip or cut them to a shorter length. You can't do that level of customization to the monitor arms or the ergo stands. On that note, you will have to very slightly modify your tablet to use the Zoot Pro. The touch strips and optional folding legs attach to the tablet with a very strong adhesive tape. These can be removed, but if you're concerned about keeping your tablet pristine, then you might prefer one of the other options. You can see on the back of my Cintiq 27 QHD, the stand blocks these panels and makes the cable ports difficult to access. You shouldn't need to access any of this once your tablet is already set up, but it's something to keep in mind. It's not terribly difficult to remove the display to access these panels. Cost is one of the most critical factors differentiating these stands. The most affordable option is a monitor arm, which is only around $100 to $200. The Ergo stands are typically around $500, and the Zoot Pro is a bit more expensive than that, but it's also doing a lot more. 
Even $200 is an investment, so it's worth mentioning that the Zoot Pro is not going to become obsolete once you upgrade to a new display tablet. You can simply purchase and install a new kit that will adapt the stand to your new display. This means you don't need to buy a new stand every time you upgrade your tablet. The same can be said of the monitor arms, but not the Wacom Ergo stands. Okay, so how do you buy this now that it's for sale? First of all, you can go to Zoot.pro, and there you can use the $200 off coupon code, which is expiring soon. This coupon makes the price more comparable to the Wacom Ergo stand. The Zoot Pro is expected to ship in January 2024. On the website, you simply choose the kit that matches your display tablet, and that's it. Many current tablets are supported, and some future ones will be as well. Since it will take some time to get used to using this stand, I will follow up with another review down the road, but for now, I'll share my first impressions. It was a little daunting knowing that I'd have to reconfigure my desk to accommodate the Zoot Pro, but it wasn't too bad. Aside from more bulk, the Zoot Pro is pretty much going in the same place as the monitor arm and requires a similar amount of free area on my desk. It doesn't interfere with my mic stand, which is a relief. I record myself drawing a lot, so how the stand affects my ability to record my display is a significant factor. For the most part, I don't feel much of a difference between the monitor arm and the Zoot Pro. The only change I've had to get used to is realigning my camera to the display if I move or angle it, but since the camera is on an arm, I have to do that anyway. Since the range of motion is more constrained, it might be easier to keep the display aligned with my camera. And I think it's worth it to move the display out of alignment with the camera if it means I am more comfortable physically. I am especially looking forward to using my standing desk more in the elevated position now that it's easier to angle the display. Despite not moving it much, I think I liked the sitting position better when I was using the Ergotron arm because I could get it closer to my lap, but that could just be what I had grown used to. I'm going to give it a little longer to see how I adapt to sitting and drawing on the Zoot Pro. In regards to switching between sitting and standing, the Zoot Pro makes it much faster to adjust my display. I also see an immediate benefit from being able to move my display away from me when I am typing or doing anything that doesn't require the pen or touch. It's easier on my eyes and neck. It was possible to move the display forward and backward with the monitor arm, but once fully extended, the arm was difficult to push away due to the middle joint of the arm not easily bending left or right because of the tension. And, should I need to use my desktop for something like recording footage for a video, I can put the display upright and easily slide it back. It doesn't move as far away as when I was using the monitor arm, but it's good enough. I get a little over half my desktop depth back. Unlike when I use the other stands, I feel encouraged to move the display. There isn't any excuse to leave it in a single position when it's so easy to move. I think that's really accomplishing the goal of the Zoot Pro. In my case, I think ergonomics is the main factor separating the Zoot Pro from the monitor arm I had been using. I want to be more ergonomic and move my body rather than being sedentary, so I'm giving the Zoot Pro a chance. In conclusion, I am very excited that I can bring the Zoot Pro to you as a retail product and not just a prototype. From the beginning, I have seen the potential in this device, and I am fortunate to have had the opportunity to work with it and help make it available for my fellow digital artists. This is not just another stand, it's a revolution in how we work. Being sedentary is one of the few disadvantages of being a creative person who works on a computer, so it's incredibly beneficial to have an option that supports a healthier way of working. Honestly, this just feels like the way it should be to work with a touch and pen display. Considering touch devices have been around since the 70s, it's surprising that it's taken this long for ergonomics to be factored into how we use these devices. I believe the Zoot Pro will really catch on and you'll be seeing this type of stand becoming more widely adopted across a wide range of industries. That's all there is to say about the Zoot Pro for now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.